We've already talked about bipedality a lot, but so far we focused on how humans are bipedal. Now let's talk about the why, the reasons why being bipedal might be advantageous in the first place. Oh, why are we bipedal? Um, bipedalism is, of course, us walking on two feet. And as you can see by looking at all of the putative fossil hominins, or the earliest hominins, that this is one of the very first traits to evolve in our lineage. And it doesn't uh, seem to be associated with larger brains. In fact, bipedality predates larger brains by a couple million years. So the question really is why? Why is bipedalism advantageous, but also why did it happen now and why isn't it paired with these other traits? There have been so many different theories for why bipedalism is advantageous. And if we're just talking about, is it helpful? There's many different ways it's helpful. We can carry stuff. It can be food. It can be weapons. Um, because now our hands are free. We're not using them to locomote. It also allows us to travel between trees. So if there's a lot of flat ground, it's a little bit easier for us to walk. There are a lot of smaller quadrupedal primates that they actually hardly ever go down to the ground and it's really hard for them to be terrestrial, but not for humans. It also it allows us to be a little bit taller. So it's easier for us to reach food standing from the ground when we are standing up on our legs rather than being um, on all fours. Um, there are also some benefits to thermoregulation, um, and we can see a little bit over tall grass, that's one theory. Um, and there's one weird theory that it might be related to aquatic life, but no, that no. Um, so there are many different theories that we just talked about, but let's talk about some of the major ones. So locomotor efficiency is one of them. And this just means that it's easier to walk between trees if you're walking on two legs than all fours. Um, this can be a little bit complicated to really figure out like, okay, do we move more efficiently than chimps and all of that? But that's the general idea here. The next one is thermoregulation um, and that we want to avoid being overheated. The next one is the freeing of the hands. Um, because we are only using two feet to walk, now we can do other stuff with our hands. This is generally related to ideas of tool use. Um, and the most common hypothesis that you will encounter is the savanna hypothesis. But first, remember, bipedality is one of the very first things to happen in the hominin lineage. Tools don't exist yet. So even though it could still be the freeing of the hands to carry food or maybe to reach something, we definitely know that the origin of bipedalism is not related to stone tools. Um, but let's look a little bit at this idea of thermoregulation because this is a pretty cool idea. So here you can see a chimpanzee walking on all fours and a uh, hominin. Um, so you can see that's not a human there. It's, um, it's a drawing of what we think one of those earliest hominins might have looked at um, standing on two feet. So first, the chimpanzee on all fours, it's going to get a lot more solar radiation. So it's going to heat up more because there's more surface area exposed to the sun. Um, if you're on two feet, there's actually less of you that is uh, exposed to the sun. And because we're standing upright, more of us is exposed to the wind. So it's going to be much easier for us to cool off um, due to both of these reasons than a quadrupedal chimpanzee. And, you know, Africa is kind of hot and not being overheated is kind of important. Um, but the most common thing you're going to hear talked about is something called the savanna hypothesis. And many of these other features actually tie into the savanna hypothesis in one way or another. So the savanna environment is a mixture of grasslands and trees, and it's the classic environment that most people think of when you hear the word Africa. Africa is, of course, huge, and there are a lot of different environments. There's desert, there's rainforest, but there's also the classic African savanna where the zebras, wildebeest, and lions roam. Um, at the time the earliest hominins lived, um, Africa was becoming a little bit drier. So this led to the idea that maybe our ancestors evolved bipedality as an adaptation to walk between these trees. Other people thought of different um, uh, examples that would be helpful, like maybe we wanted to be able to see over the grass. You know, the grass is pretty short. Chimpanzees can see over it too. Um, and maybe we just needed to carry things between different places. And because 
we are now exposed to the sun, we're not hidden in the rainforest, that um, the ideas of thermoregulation come into play. So the Savannah hypothesis has a lot of different pieces related to these other hypotheses. So it is a little bit hard to figure out exactly what's going on. This is of course challenged by the fact that the environments of the very earliest hominins don't seem to be the savanna. So the savanna hypothesis in the strictest form is not supported with the fossil data we do have now, um, but it may have elements of truth for later parts of human evolution. Um, though of course that is highly debated. Um, and regardless of its truth, the savanna is just beautiful and um, has some of my favorite landscape photos of all time. Um, there is, of course, this additional hypothesis that our first ancestors climbed down from the trees to retrieve a drop snack. That's the onion. That's a joke. So, can you explain? Why do we think bipedalism evolved in hominins?